Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to be watching episodes from The Big Bang Theory Season 10 to see how accurate all the science technology in those episodes really are. Realize if the military declares our research classified, they can take the whole thing away from us. Yeah, and if that happens, we'll never be able to sell it commercially. There goes our big payday. I was counting on that money. I need to make as much as my wife so I don't have to try so hard in bed. <laughs> you do that too? Alright, um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to talk about what Howard's going through right now. I think that's his own issues with masculinity. I will say, though, regarding the Air Force taking over your research, yeah, absolutely can happen. Not for every purpose. If it's a privatized company, for example, the Air Force can't just waltz into SpaceX or Tesla and then say, all right, everything you have, we have. Because if you're not government funded, then they really don't have much say in what you do or how you operate. I mean, provided that you're within the legal confines of the law. In this situation, since the university is government funded, they're not giving you this money for charity. They're giving it to you because whatever research you conduct, they get a piece of it too. In fact, I, I, I feel like in the previous episode, we found out that they actually control majority of the patent. That's completely legal. If someone is giving you millions upon millions of dollars to build these grand facilities to take all these measurements and instruments and tools, there's no way that these accomplishments could have been done if it wasn't for military funding. That's their logic. We're not going to be able to deliver in the time we promised. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? You're okay with that? <laughs> what, you think you're the first government contractor who isn't going to deliver on time? <laughs> Still waiting for a big space laser rig in order to beat the commies. <laughs> this is incredibly common, and not just for government contracts, for any of these contracts in general. What a lot of these companies or oh, general, that was a stupid joke. What, what a lot of these companies will do is they will just tell them, all right, you have six months, you have a year, you have whatever. They're, almost in all these scenarios, the people who are assigning you these deadlines are fully aware these deadlines are probably not going to happen. The whole idea behind this being, okay, well, if we tell you to get it done in one year, then you'll work so incredibly hard to get it done that maybe it only takes you a year and a half. But if you tell somebody, well, you know what? Take your time. Don't worry about it. Five years, six years, it's all good. Just go ahead. That, that, that's not going to happen. Because if you tell someone, take your time, they'll believe you. They'll take their sweet, sweet time. Which is why when you set deadlines and you tell them, well, why wasn't the project, or why, why haven't you completed the milestones which we've set along the way? It's, okay, here's the obstacles, here's why we can't do it, here's what we need, and then execute accordingly. This is very common, though. It doesn't matter what company you work for, wherever you are. I cannot think of a single product that has ever been released exactly on the initial specified completion date. What would a theoretical physicist understand about an experiment anyway? I mean, you wouldn't know a confounding variable if two of them hit you in the face at the same time. <laughs> and you don't even get that joke because you don't even work with confounding variables. All right. Uh, in all fairness, I don't really work with confounding variables either. I do know what they are. A confounding variable is... It's basically a, a uncontrolled, unmeasured influence that'll affect both your independent and dependent variable. And an example of that would be for people who drink coffee or any other type of drink. Let's just say if you find a correlation between people who smoke cigarettes and people who drink coffee and you then the, then the then the experiment ends up saying, well, the more coffee you drink, the more chances you have of getting lung cancer. It's like, well, that's not actually true. Smoking the cigarettes was the confounding variable in this case because if it just, and I, I just made that up, I actually don't know if there's a correlation between people who drink coffee and smoke cigarettes, but just for the sake of an example, if there are more coffee drinkers that smoke cigarettes, it's very, very difficult to outline the health risks of drinking coffee because so many of your sample size also smoke cigarettes. So it's like, how do you know drinking coffee leads to these health problems? Maybe it's the cigarettes. Maybe it's the combination of the coffee and the cigarettes, which is also why it's so hard to have any sort of health study on the human body because 
There are so many confounding variables all over the place. You can get a lot of correlations, but it, you require so much data and time that just just drink coffee. It's amazing. It's good for you. And I don't know. I'm just making this stuff up because I just really like coffee. Uh, sorry, I could come back. Oh, no, it's okay. I, I just found a wobble. Oh, do I need a mop? <laughs> it's a gravitational wobble. It could be a sign of an extrasolar planet that may contain life and someday be named after me. Oh. That's... Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's not something that you hear about very commonly, but exactly what he was saying. A gravitational wobble is a phenomenon that... It, it, you know that a wobble has occurred when the planet, in, or the invisible planet, because you don't know actually where it is in space, but you know that there is a gravitational object there because it's pulling on, the, on all the stars and other things around it. Uh, okay, so the, there, there's a scene in Star Wars, uh, the Clone Wars? There's a scene where Obi-Wan Kenobi is walking up to Master Yoda and... Uh, he places this little like marble looking thing inside the center and then you can see all the stars just pop up all around him and he goes okay there should be a planet right here but there's not and you you know there's a planet there because all the stars are orbiting around this center of gravity well if if you see everything moving in, in around a particular area of gravity but you cannot observe that object that like, shift is called a gravitational wobble. There is a chance that the gravitational wobble ends up resulting in a planet that could sustain life, and it could end up being the planet Camino, where there's just these weird lizard-looking things that, with just giant bug eyes, and as it turns out, they've just been cloning Jango Fett for who knows how long, and as it turns out, Order 66 will just kill everybody pretty cool. It interprets emotions using a wireless signal to analyze subtle changes in breathing and heart rate. Now I'm gonna look at some pictures to prompt an emotional response and we'll see if the machine can identify them accurately. Remember, it can only detect happy, sad, angry, and excited. I would not be surprised if the emotion detecting de device was actually, emotion detection device was actually real. I'm really not sure why it has to be that big. I mean, why can't you use the camera on your phone to just detect the person. I mean, I guess it'd be kind of weird if you're like, hey, so how are you feeling? Got it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, that would definitely lead to some weird conversations. Although, it's gonna be far less awkward than walking around with this <laughs> wherever you go. And I will also wonder if, th even if it was a beta test, it seems like a bit much if, because imagine if there are multiple people in this field of view, how does it know who's, person's emotions to read and because your phone has a much smaller lens which would make it easier to pinpoint a single person people have been inventing devices like this forever the prime example is the polygraph or lie detector test the whole purpose of that right is people who stay calm and collected the entire time can beat it because it, it, it's measuring very very similar signals it's the electrical signals your heart rate amongst other things to determine if you're lying but if once you like once you set the establishing questions which are generally a baseline for truth of like what's your name where are you what, what what's the day today these are things that everyone knows to be true so once you have that baseline the farther you are from that baseline they say you're lying but at the same time if you were just anxious or if you were feeling any sort of extreme emotion it would register as a lie and that's not always accurate which is why polygraph tests are not admissible in court. This machine falls into such a similar category, and I think that at the end of the day, engineers are just stuck with getting in touch with their own emotions so they can better read the emotions of others. Can't escape human contact, boys. That was a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I wish you all the best rest of your day.